one doing it. We are. We're probably just Philippines on three. One, two, three. We're probably here in the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight, live from the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street in the heart of Fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Dylan Jorgensen. Your co-host, Andy Donahue. Bonnie Gore. Music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest, Nevada State Congresswoman, Nina Titus. Artist, Stephen Lagord. And Miss Atomic. My guest tonight is a local artist who immortalizes Nevada icons. Let's talk to him about his bronze medal and our state's love affair with the atomic bomb. Let's welcome Steve Liguori. Okay, so you made this here. Yes, with my nephew, Andrew Liguori. Oh, and is he on Facebook? Yes, he is. <laughs> is he single? Yes, he is. Nice. <laughs> It sounds like the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but, um, okay, when did you make this bronze sculpture? It is a uh, Las Vegas icon. It's Miss Atomic Bomb. Lynn Merrill. Okay. Yeah, she was a showgirl at the uh, Sands Hotel in the Copa room. Right. Mm -hmm, a and, Copa girl. And almost everybody has seen it. I mean, everybody in Las Vegas, for sure, has seen this, and I think it's a national icon as well. But why, you know... What is our love affair with the atomic bomb? And you know, why did we kind of sexualize this and immortalize it in pictures and now in uh, the bronze statue? I think it's something that Nevada has gone through in its history that uh, we've kind of had like a love affair, hate affair with, you know? Right. I mean, it's, uh, th th there's an irony to it, you know? There's this real powerful thing and then it's really super dangerous too. Right. So you got power, you know, wow. And danger. Prestige, beauty, and then you got, you know, radioactivity. Right. So it's... Uh, well, people used to love to have, like, atomic bomb watch parties, right? Yeah. Like We have the atomic bar down the street here on East Fremont, and, um, you know, they, they tell stories about how people used to go sit on the roof there and watch, um, watch the bombs. You know, do you have <laughs> any fun stories of what you've heard about... You know, your dad was a minor here, right? Yeah. Well, the fifth three school right here. Mm -hmm. When my brother went there, we, I, I was there for something. My mom took me to, and the bomb went off, and they opened the doors. There was like a door that goes outside, to the to face where it was, and we went out and looked at the, the bomb going off. You know, you could see a brightness in the sky. That's, that's a long crazy. time ago. I was a little little kid. Right. But, you know, it, it, people got, just like watching the, the shuttles go up in space or rockets go up in space, people like explosions. I mean, I like fire. You know, right. I mean, heavy you metal, you know. So there's some type of draw to it, I think. Is this to scale? Because that's a big no, gal. No, she's one point. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know the exact height of her. So I made her like 1.25 higher than I thought she was. So it should right. be more dynamic and be more of a, a monument than just, you know, because she was the same size as us, I mean, she'd be, you know, like here. Okay, so right. Yeah, no, I was just wondering if I was slacking in like no, areas. No, you, you look great. I can see, I can see behind the, behind the bomb is what I'm saying. <laughs> so, <laughs> did you have models actually model while you sculpted this? Yes, I did. Um, more than one, right? Yes. Did you do that because you just wanted to see a bunch of hot chicks in the... <sighs> <laughs> well, and yeah, I gotta admit, I love women. <laughs> well, um, just to get the anatomy right, you know, some some of the models were able to come a lot. Um, some of the models weren't able to come a lot, so you know, you, you had a variety. Now the face uh, that was off of one model because you know I was trying to get the her face with the contortion because I mean right. she's got her mouth open so wide and. You know, uh, want to try to <laughs> get the look where it, it I mean, looks like it's a real person, you know? Right. No, and it does. It's really, really pretty. Where do you keep her now? In my atelier. Somewhere? No, I just, I have other bronzes I store there. I just, you know. 
So I don't have it on display and yet. And this wasn't your first bronze piece. You've done no. some really other historic pieces at Hoover Dam. Can you yes. tell me a little bit about those? Um, the Hoover Dam piece is of Joe Kine, and he is actually a, a worker. Like it, that's irony there with, right. with him, too, because uh, unofficially, 707 people died constructing the Hoover Dam. Officially, 198 died. Mm. So, you know, you got, you know, if, if you work directly with the Bureau of Reclamation, or if you were for like Ingersoll Rand or Mack Truck, then you were considered, you know, an employee at the Hoover Dam, so you weren't counted. Right. Mm. So there's, you know, um, this was a very dangerous job. And Joe Kine came out on July the 15th in 1931, and um, he he was a part of the of Boulder City. He actually worked on the Glen County Dam too. Okay. Um, but. Uh, and you had the opportunity to meet. Um, did you meet him as well? Yes. Right. Well, he lived in Boulder City mm -hmm. too. Um, they're really good people, <laughs> and you know, you, it, it's a very small community. You right. know, like uh, Tommy Nelson was a gentleman that worked on the Hoover Dam. He was a mucker right. in the daytime, and at night he played a trumpet and got a band together and actually morale booster. Well, why bronze? I know you work with a lot of different mediums, but why bronze? Um, well, bronze is easier to pour. Where Stainless steel is not so easy to melt and pour. Um, bronze you can have outside. This is a, a silicone bronze, mm -hmm. so it's really durable and it'll take weather really well. And so it'll stand up for a super long time. The so you could put her outside like almost indefinitely, right? Yeah, that's oh, yeah. great. And you, could, I mean, and there's ways to keep her patina on her too. Ah, oh, come on, I test her whole thing here, you know. <laughs> I mean. And my nephew, <coughs> but uh, she'll last, and it's something that is permanent. And when you're trying to preserve our history, because you know our history here in uh, Nevada is very, very short as, as far as white people here. You know, Native Americans have been here for a long time. Right. So to preserve our history, especially when you knew these people, and I mean, I wish I knew her. You know, that'd been kind of cool to be able to talk to her and find out what she's doing now. That the news bureau couldn't find her, so. She Most of the women that went out to the atomic test site for being a uh, missed atomic bomb, right. uh, they died a, of a uh, thyroid cancer. Right. Mm. So you so think she's done so? Yeah. Well, mm. she never responded. Right. So if you're out there, Lynn Merrill, uh, Lynn, respond. Come on the know? podcast. Yeah, definitely. That'd be really nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, really? seriously. Yeah. I mean, we'll put you back in this suit, Lynn. Well, <laughs> even if she got with like the. Uh, uh, Mark Hall Patton or um, Dennis McBride at Nevada State Museum or the Clark County Museum, you know, and told her history. That'd be, to preserve our history out here is really important right now. It is, right, because it's so you, new. Well, it is. We're, what, 200 years old? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's really young. Right. Um, so, you know, the more we can do and the more we can preserve our history here, I think the better it's going to be a sense of community for not just our families, but uh, our friends and right. people that come and visit here. That we're not just, you know, oh, wow, it's hotels and gambling and shows, but there's real people. But there is, yeah. History. Well, and the history and the people that built this place. And this is, you know, this includes that as well. Yeah. So uh, you work with other you know, you're an artist across the board. You work with leather now as well, or maybe always have, but you're working on a patent through with leather and you're a jeweler also. Yes. Right. So what can you tell us any, anything about that? Uh, anything uh, about your your whole leather adventure that it seems like a mystery, but I'm curious about it. I like leather a lot. Um it's uh, uh this one gentleman, uh Ted uh, Guillotine actually taught me how to do some leather tooling. And then um Silver went up to like, well, that was when I was a kid. I was like 16 or something like that, or 17. But uh, silver went up to $15 an ounce, and I was really thinking about, boy, you can tool leather. Mm -hmm. Like, you can tool. So you kind of just integrated it with your, like, jewelry silver and. Silver and gold. Right. So you know how they, they did the Statue of Liberty? Yes. They did a represé. The French. Yeah. They, it, it's it's cut, it's, they made, like, these wooden forms. I'm sorry. You're good. Then. They made these wooden forms, and then they beat the copper into it, and then chase it back out. And so I did the leather the same way. Right. And it, it's uh, it stands up. I can do leather, and or I can do sculpture in um, lambskin. Oh, lizard. That's soft. Yeah, it's really that's soft. The bomb. It's supple. It's really really nice, especially for purses or clothing. You know. It's good. Or a veggie tan. 
So I like to end all of my podcasts now, starting today. Uh-oh. Today, Uh-oh. <laughs> with a would you rather. Because I feel like when you would you rather people, you kind of get to know them inadvertently. Would you rather take a really quick, like a quick dip in nuclear waste wash off and to see what's going to happen over the years? <laughs> or crawl into bed and discover peanut butter in your sheets every night for the rest of your life? Depends who's my sheets. <laughs> who's your sheet? No, you said in my sheets? Yeah, the peanut butter. Is in my sheets. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Every night for the rest of your life. Uh, like in your toe, between your toes. Oh, in my feet. Everywhere. Oh, everywhere. And you forget until you crawl in every single night. I would try the peanut butter first. No, you don't get a choice. It's oh. like, that's it. I'll go with peanut butter. Peanut butter it is. <laughs> that's disgusting. Thank you. <laughs> Well, where can people find you? I know that um, you know you get commissioned to do a lot of work. So, mm -hmm. where can people find you in the future? Um, they can go to stevenlagori.com um, or uh, yeah, stevenlagori at gmail.com is my email. Uh, I and find you around Boulder City, roaming the streets. Yeah, find me in Boulder City, roaming the streets. Uh, I stay pretty secluded lately. I've just been sculpting and making things up. Awesome. Well, we can't see, wait to see what's next. We'll have you on next time you, you know, hammer out one of these beauties and um, your nephew's in town. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. And thank, thank you for you bringing much. her. She's wonderful. We love thank her. <laughs> All right. Up next, we have Andy with Congresswoman Dina Titus. Come on, y'all. Let's hear it. I thought you already had Andy with Dina Titus. <laughs> All right, we're so excited to have back on the program the Congresswoman from Nevada's first district, which is home to the Inspire Theater, and a couple people's favorite podcast, Congresswoman Dina Titus. Thank you, thank you. It's nice oh. to be here. Oh, it's Welcome back. This is great. So, so, Congresswoman, how energized are you for November? Well, it's a crazy election season out there. I, mm -hmm. I often wonder if I were still in the classroom how I would explain what's going on. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> there's no theory that fits this. But we're working hard. This is my district, you mentioned, District mm -hmm. 1, and we take nothing for granted. You either mm -hmm. run scared or you run unopposed, mm -hmm. so we're out there working. Right, right, yeah. Always, always, no doubt. It's the fighting first. Yes. District. yes, it is. <laughs> if it's happening in Nevada, it's in District 1. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, speaking of the local district, um, we might be reminded of Speaker of the House O'Neill when I ask, are all politics still local? Well, they are. You know, I represent the most exciting district in the world. Wherever I go, I say I'm from Las Vegas. People know where that is. They have a story. You know, our district goes from the airport to downtown. Mm -hmm. And so if you've ever seen the movie Hangover, that's like an average day in our office. <laughs> sure it is. Yeah. Now, vo voting is a lot of fun. Uh, if I think for everybody. Um, do you have a preference on caucuses versus primaries? Well, Nevada has a caucus system, mm -hmm. and I think we should keep that because that puts us early in the rotation. Right. We get to be the third state, and right. that means we have more influence. So I don't want to change away from that caucus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, mm -hmm. sure. Um, now, politics being local, uh, and a downtown podcast recently just officially considered our, uh, our mission of sorts to connect people and ideas. Oh, that's kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we, we could also be considered a party of ideas in yes. a different sense. Yeah. And two really big ideas um, are on the ballot this year. That's of, true. And, and perhaps three if solar happens. Yep. Um, of enhanced background checks on private firearm uh, transactions and transfers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some support for that idea. <laughs> and... Um, uh, retail marijuana would be enabled at the state level, mm -hmm. and also solar. That's right. um, now, in, in your view, do you think uh, any uh, candidate or another might benefit from those ideas being on the ballot? 
Well, those are pretty progressive ideas. So mm -hmm. the Democrats would like to think they'll turn more people out who then will vote for Democratic candidates. So mm -hmm. uh, you can't count on that being a silver bullet. You don't just vote for a person because of their label. You mm -hmm. want to have some reason sure. to support them. But I think if it benefits anybody, it'll benefit us. I see. I see. Fascinating. Um, now, uh, you, you brought some reading material for I us. Did. I did. Well, that's right. Well, you said that you want to talk about ideas. So ideas. I brought you. Sure. Yeah. Now, um, going back to, I think it's question two. Is that what it is for uh, the That's right. One is for there? firearms. That's right. So question two. This is one of your latest publications, one of many, um, <laughs> title of which is Puff, Puff, Pass, That Law. What? <laughs> now, <laughs> it's, what, it's the title. It's uh, from a... From a organization in Cambridge, Massachusetts, of some note, yeah, and uh, <laughs> and um, is this also a calling to vote, vote, pass this vote? Is it a well, formal endorsement? Well, uh, you know, while I'm legislating, I also like to keep my hand in academe. So I mm -hmm. wrote up about this uh, this issue for mm -hmm. a, a journal, mm -hmm. but I'm part of the Cannabis Caucus oh, in okay. Congress, wow. and have been very supportive of legislation uh -huh. that would. Uh, uh, decrease any kind of criminal penalties, would provide banking services, mm -hmm. would recognize medical marijuana so the federal government doesn't go after people in the states where mm -hmm. it's legal. And so that's kind of what that's about. Yeah. More access to the VA, more mm -hmm. access for studying the impact of marijuana. So oh, yeah, that's yeah. what that's about. As I recall, your congressional colleague, Dr. Heck, has also been a bit progressive on some of those fronts. Well, for the he's rates. recently signed on. He's a bit mm -hmm. of a Johnny come lately to the oh, issue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all right, great, sure. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was also a state senator, and uh, the, but the fact that the veterans are at the forefront, I that's think, right. is most appropriate. I think that's why he joined it. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, even in states where medical marijuana is legal, mm -hmm. the VA can't talk to right. any veterans about the use of it as right. a potential. And yet we've seen that it helps with PTSD, it helps mm -hmm. with pain management. It's something that should be offered as an alternative. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, uh, as I think everyone can appreciate, probably the second or third most exciting event in Nevada politics is coming up on September 1st. And of course, I'm talking about the bill draft request deadline for oh. a state legislature. Oh, okay. <laughs> are there any... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are, 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 <laughs> I can see that really turned on this yeah, audience. Yeah, that, sure. I, I was looking forward to that day. Now, uh, the cannabis related or otherwise, are there any BDRs that you hope get into the deadline or get heard this coming uh, Well, February? I haven't uh, been following too much of what's happening at the state legislature. I know mm -hmm. they're looking at... Uh, possibly redoing the school district. I think mm -hmm. that's one thing that uh, oh, yeah. might be on the agenda. Yeah, I'm opposed to that too, but mm -hmm. uh, that's at the state legislature. So I, I'm not sure what the big budget issues are there. Mm -hmm. I, if some of these ballot questions pass, then the state legislature will have to take them up right. to put in place laws that uphold mm -hmm. those ballot questions. Mm -hmm. And that's true for one, too, that's on the mm -hmm. uh, background checks, sure. which I also support. All right. Uh, uh, now, before we get into some of the nuclear options of books here, um, I was curious if there's any, what, what does D.C. need to know about Nevada? Well, I'm a big uh, advocate for our state. I'm always talking about Nevada, and people come to me to ask me questions about gaming because, mm. you know, we are the masters at that. But just uh, earlier today, we had a press conference to talk about Gold Butte, and we need uh -huh. for people to know Nevada's not a wasteland. Even mm. though it's a desert, we have real treasures here that they should come out and visit. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Visiting. <laughs> and you've also been uh, very vocal on um, uh, making sure Yucca Mountain is right. safe and handled correctly. Uh, so hopefully our mountains can remain rock solid. <laughs> exactly. I, 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 that was cute. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think it, Yucca Mountain should be handled safely. I think it shouldn't be handled at all. I'm very mm -hmm. much opposed to storing waste at Yucca Mountain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so, can, so no option is off the table when it comes to that, including a possible 
nuclear option. Which brings us to some of these great reading materials you brought in. Can we, Dylan, can we get another one of these? Oh, okay. um, now, this is one of your earlier publications, That's Bombs true. in the Backyard. Yeah. Um, how might a reader find this to resonate today? Well, you know, plus ça change, plus LMM shows. The more things change, the more they stay the same. So we mm -hmm. have to always be on guard. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's more of a historical perspective of when we did atomic testing in Nevada back during the 50s mm -hmm. up to the early 60s. But the test site is still there, right. and it's at a level of readiness that if an administration said we need to <laughs> test again, they mm -hmm. could do it again. Great. Well, what is it about Nevada that makes us so enticing for groundbreaking research? You know, we got the UAVs, the drones now. That's true. We've got yeah. solar. We've got electric vehicles. Uh, and we had the first atomic testing as well. well. Why are we so perfect for innovation? Well, we have a lot of space. That's mm -hmm. one thing. A lot of land space and air space where mm -hmm. you can use that. And also, people in Nevada are entrepreneurial. I grew up in the South. If I had stayed there, I could never accomplish what I have been able to do in Nevada. Sure. Shoot, in Nevada, if you have some crazy idea in the morning, by the afternoon, you can get three or four people to go along with you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, now... It we have an artistic example yes, here I of like this. Uh, I like this the sculpture. atomic testing. Uh, <laughs> it, it seems like the what you described is like a cultural phenomenon here. You know, we, it wasn't man-made like a number of other things, like our legs sometimes. <laughs> but it, it's just innately there. It's just the West. It's like we're the frontier. So we are. There's still a lot of cowboys here in Nevada. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are, are any of them also elected officials? <laughs> <laughs> well, possibly. Some of them are now in jail, thank goodness, too. Oh, so, you know. Goodness, wow. <laughs> um, well, in a, uh, you, you were kind of to bring your husband's yearbook, which is just another example of atomic testing, uh, influencing culture, because uh, even the kids were into it in the 50s. This is a, an actual high school yearbook. From Las the Vegas 50s. High School. Las Vegas High School. 1953. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it looks like they thought it was the bomb. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's true. That shows wow. you how much a part of the culture it, it was. It was just at every level of the community and, and perhaps the state. And uh, which brings us to, a, as we wrap up, a very contentious issue that I think state level and lawmakers from the state can find a consensus on that I think everyone needs to get clearer. Okay. How do we properly say... Nevada. Well, we say it wrong. You know, the oh. correct pronunciation mm -hmm. from the Spanish is Nevada, uh, Sierra oh, Nevada. Really? But we have come to say it as Nevada. Nevada. And anybody who comes out here and does not say Nevada, mm -hmm. you know they're a stranger yeah. and you know they're <laughs> saying it wrong. Right, right. So it sounds like there are two schools of thought and they're both overall okay. Well, people make fun of my accent anyway. Mm -hmm. So if I'm saying it wrong, it doesn't really matter. So I can say Nevada and, you know, works. Great. Um, well, what, what's coming up for uh, Nevada uh, on the congressional level or just something you're looking forward to? Well, we go back right after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. We're there for the month of September. We're home for the month of October leading up to the election. There's mm -hmm. not a lot that's going to happen in Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why we do a lot of focusing on constituent services here in the district. Mm -hmm. So if you know anybody who needs help with a veterans issue, immigration, Medicare, Social Security, mm -hmm. call my office. We're just down the street at Charleston, Las Vegas Boulevard. In fact, we're on a bus stop. We're across from Legal Aid. We're across from Veterans Village. We're near the Mexican Consulate. And we're right behind the Walgreens that is the most robbed store in the country. <laughs> you just never know what's going to walk in that door. It's my neighborhood. That's my neighborhood, yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> but that's why we're here. So that we enjoy being yeah, part yeah. of it. It, it, it seems like the location just is another reminder that all politics are still local. There you go, yeah, and, and right here in District 1. Yeah, thanks for coming back to the program. Well, please invite me anytime. We will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, that was Congressman Dina Titus. <laughs> Thank you. And coming up next, we have Monster's Foot by Alan Goya. All right, yeah. thank, thank you. you. That was great. <laughs> yeah, you. make some noise for Andy on his first interview. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Uh, yeah.
Tokyo, 1962. Not a very pleasant place. There is much sadness, and a gray stench lies over the city. The ground lays bruised and battered. Uh, now, I'm all for science and all that good stuff, and yeah, I know about the peaceful atom. But hey, these mutant monsters, created by nuclear accidents, are causing a lot of problems for Tokyo. All these test explosions forming cracks in the earth full of monsters! Tokyo, 1962, and we have a big lizard problem. Welcome to the home of Seiji Jones Kiabu. He's preparing his simple dinner of decone and uh, Vienna sausage. Uh, his home, or what's left of his home, lies on the bottom of a huge footprint left by the monster Rodan. What remains is nothing more than a shack circa 12th century in the primitive, efficient style. Uh, oh yeah, and a grand piano. In the summer months, Seiji makes some extra money as a tourist attraction, playing his piano in the bottom of the footprint. <sighs> I can make more money if I knew how to play this piano. Yes, he lives a very stupid life. There are many sad stories of lonely, desperate souls. One such soul is Kiyoshi Kathleen Katamuchi, she makes a meager living, to, uh, to say it best, selling pharmaceuticals door to door. Hello down there. Burn ointment for sale. Burn ointment for sale. Hello, yes, you down there. Do you want to buy some lotion? That's lotion with lenolin, with camphor, menthol, eucalyptus oil imported, fragrances, sodium borate, and bromonitropropane. Hello down there. Hey. You got any Vix inhalers? Yes, we do. Come on down. Ah, yes, I, I have one right here. It's almost new. What? It's only been used once. Nani? <laughs> Excuse me, please, but do you think I could come in for a moment to cool off? There's so much radiation out here. I haven't even showered for hours. Oh, haite kodasai. Certainly, certainly, please come in. Pardon me for my rudeness. No, no, pardon me for my abruptness. No, pardon me for my oversensitivity. No, no, pardon me for my insensitivity. Okay. Okay? It's an expression. Ah, ah, pardon me for my ignorance. Mm -mm -mm. Pardon me for my borrowed cliche. Cliche? Okay. You were selling burn ointment. Come on in. My name is Seiji Jones Kiabu. What's your name? You are a war baby? Hi, war baby this. Ah, so am I. My name is Kayoshi Kathleen Katama Uchi. Oh, may I call you Uchi? May I call you Abu? Okay, I see what you mean. Why don't I call you Kathy and you can call me Jonesy? Hi. Ano, are you married? Yes, yes I am, but uh, my husband was eaten by Godzilla. I'm sorry. My wife was vaporized by Mothra, but it's not as bad as my Uncle Hiro. He was stepped on. Or my brother Toshi, who was killed by a stray missile that was aimed at Rodan. Uh, hi. I should go now. It has been a long day, but I still have many more footprints to visit. But here, take this Vix inhaler. It's a gift. Oh, no. I couldn't. Please, please. OK. Thank you very much. Arigato gozaimasu. Uh, only used once. OK. <laughs> it's a monster alert! What should we do? Uh, I wish we were in Poland. I never heard of any monsters in Poland. We must run. We've got to seek shelter before it's too late. It is too late. Even now, I can hear the monster approaching. Besides, I never leave my piano. Don't worry, we'll be all right. Besides, I never heard of a monster stepping in the same place twice. But what if it's a different monster? No! <laughs> and
And so it is in tragic Tokyo, where the sound of the siren is the song of sorrow. Tokyo 1962, and we still have a big lizard problem. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. I'd like to thank all of our guests this evening. Thank you to our cast and crew and to all you podcasts at home. Remember, you're all welcome to be a part of our live studio audience every Thursday night at 9 p.m. right here at the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street. Party with, party with us for the after party on the roof, rooftop. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Downtown Podcast. Thank you. Salamat, salamat. Peace.